Okay, so here's the problem. Let's say I've saved 1200 US dollars and I'm ready to buy a new device. Here is one, MacBook Air on M2, 256 gigabytes of storage, 8 gigabytes of RAM. Here is another one, iPad Pro on M1, 256 gigabytes of storage, 8 gigabytes of RAM. Both share the same price, at least in the US, so which one to buy, the MacBook Air or the iPad Pro? It's Alex here, welcome to the Geeks Table, and let's find out together. To be honest with you, I'm in a weird position here. I'm a software developer, so I have been using a MacBook for years, and my setup for editing videos is on a MacBook as well, so I do like it, I feel at home there. So as a quick answer, I could easily say, buy the MacBook Air. But that would be quite boring, wouldn't it? iPad Pro has a lot of potential and versatility. You can use the touchscreen, keyboard, pencil or trackpad. And it looks much cooler to me. So let's make it a challenge and try to find where this iPad Pro can beat the MacBook Air. MacBook Air is an incredibly thin and light machine, hands down. And when you compare it to the iPad Pro, it's stunning how close they are. But there is something many reviewers forget. When we are traveling, we don't usually take just the device itself. So here are all the accessories that I had for both of them. So in my case, the iPad Pro configuration was actually heavier. It might be not the case for you, depending on which accessories you use, of course. But anyways, I should say the iPad Pro itself is more compact. Even the biggest model can occupy dramatically less space on a small table. If you travel a lot, you know how small are tables on airplanes, trains and some cafes. The MacBook Air was okay on this table, but on the train or plane it might be very tricky. Especially when they bring meals to you. On the other hand, the MacBook Air gives you the keyboard and the trackpad included, and more importantly, you can set the screen to any angle you like, so you'll feel comfortable. Even if it's just to remove the annoying reflection of the table lamp. With the iPad, you might need some extra accessories. And speaking of accessories, today I'm showing you some items from Moft. They are famous for making unusual foldable stands for all portable gadgets. So if you're leaning towards buying an iPad Pro, then a stand is a must-have. You probably won't even notice it on the iPad because it's super slim, weighs almost nothing, and gives you up to six angles of choice. So you can enjoy watching videos or having a video call wherever you are. I wish it had a really small angle for handwriting, but well, who knows, maybe in the next version. The other stand is a bit heavier and it can make the iPad float above the table. The same effect when you use the magic keyboard. It looks great, but I didn't really enjoy how the tablet wobbles up and down, probably because I have the heaviest iPad available. But it's a great companion if you prefer working with a keyboard and a trackpad, so you don't touch the tablet itself. And it's great for traveling because it's so compact. Both of these stands come with the stickers that have magnets inside, so you can attach them either directly to the iPad or to the case of your choice, and then you can easily use the stand. But you don't have to do that if you have the case cover from Moft. So good things about it, it's really thin and light, and it can hold the pencil, and also it passes through the smart connector signal, so you can keep it on the iPad while using the magic keyboard. That's something unique, to be honest. But, well, the bad thing is if you're like me and you don't like the magic keyboard case, probably it won't be that protective. All right, and the final accessory, and we'll get back to the video, is this, and it's the most crazy one. It looks like this, it's just a foldable shelf that is stuck to the wall. The applying process is pretty straightforward, just read the instructions carefully, and once it's done, you can literally put a device as heavy as the 12.9 inch iPad Pro like this, and if we are like here in the kitchen, we can safely browse the recipes while cooking. Moth says that this sticker is not only super strong, but you can also reapply it multiple times. So no matter if you will choose an iPad or a MacBook, definitely check their website. They have a foldable accessory for any device. The link will be in the description and it's not affiliated. And now back to the comparison. When I travel, I take lots of pictures with the mirrorless camera and they are in RAW, so I have to edit them first. 
iPad Pro has a great screen, but apps, well, they're cheaper than the desktop ones for sure. So usually it's like five US dollars per month. So we are saving money here, yay. But here's the thing, when you buy a desktop app, you'd expect it to support all the desktop capabilities. So when buying an iPadOS app, you would expect it to support all the iPadOS capabilities, right? Well, with the iPadOS, it's not quite that way. Adobe Lightroom doesn't support drag and drop. Capture One doesn't support multi-window. Darkroom doesn't support external storage. So with the MacBook, you simply don't have such a problem. I just connect the card reader and an external SSD and do what I need to do with no need to think if this or that feature is supported. So if you go with the iPad, you'll have those apps that do an amazing job, they are cheaper, they edit photos amazingly, but here and there you'll bump into some limitations, so just be warned. If you plan to spend some time watching videos, then iPad Pro is a clear winner here. Because of the XDR display, the black color will remain black, so no more annoying stripes on top and bottom of the screen. It supports real HDR and it's the best you can get for the price. If you watch a movie with friends or family, you have to have good speakers on your device. So once I was back from vacation, I recorded a test for you. Apple does a tremendous work on the speakers across all their devices, but still, iPad Pro is considered as a flagship, while the MacBook Air is an entry-level machine. So they definitely put the best that they have into the iPad Pro. The battery is great on both devices. Some years ago, an iPad would beat the MacBook easily because of the CPU. But now they both have Apple Silicon, so whatever you choose, if you need a good battery life, you'll get it. You might be surprised how a proper window management can increase or decrease your productivity. Personally, I can easily get distracted, so honestly, I like that by default iPad Pro has just one app per screen. On one side it's limiting, but on the other one it keeps me focused on one task at a time. But well, there are lots of scenarios when we need two or three or more apps on one screen to make the job done. Even for a simple travel planner, you need a browser, notes, booking app, Airbnb app, and a messenger. Prior iPadOS 16, I would do this. I would open Safari, click on three dots, choose the split view, and open the notes. And now I will have Safari with some articles about the place I'm going to. There will be some maps, booking, Airbnb, and also the travel notes on the right side. And if I'll need to send some link to a friend, I'll also have the Messenger as a floating app on the right. With iPadOS 16, we now have this feature called Stage Manager, so let's turn it on. It allows us to open actually multiple apps at a time on one screen. Let's open our Safari. So drag the Airbnb and make it a little bit smaller. Also the Maps, also Booking. And now we have four apps and that's the limit for the iPad Pro, but we still need the Messenger and the Notes so we can switch to them. They will be on one screen as well. So we'll have kind of like two virtual screens with four and two apps at a time and we'll have to switch between them. It needs time to adjust to this new mode and also to this like resizing the apps and switching between them. And well, it's still in beta, so something may change. And also right now it's quite unstable. It crashed double times before I recorded this. And in general, I like the idea, but I have a feeling that there is a lot of space that is left unused. 
If we switch to the MacBook Air, we can use all the screen and toss around with all the apps and lay out them as we want. And we have zero space that is left unused. Well, this might be a bit messy, but at least we can do that. And since I'm on macOS Ventura, so I can turn the stage manager here as well, because we have this mode here as well. And while clicking, does nothing really changes. And now we can switch between Safari and all our messy group. This mode may be useful at some point, but on the MacBook, it still looks artificial to me. It almost feels like let's implement this mode on the MacBook. So then we transfer it to the iPad and we can say, hey, you have the MacBook experience on the iPad. But we define the MacBook experience quite differently, don't we? So if your scenarios require one or two apps at a time, then iPad Pro will be the perfect companion. If you have to switch between four, five or more apps, then the winner here is the MacBook Air. Speaking of the screens, both devices support just one external screen. Yes, the M2 MacBook Air natively supports just one external screen, same as M1 devices. However, when you connect the screen to your MacBook Air, you will just get an extra space as you would normally do with no surprises here. With the iPad Pro, it's a bit more tricky. By default, we have this mirror display. So with all those like black stripes on left and right. So whenever we use any app, let's open Safari again and the booking is still open here. So yeah, we have lots of unused space. But since we have the iPad Pro, so it supports all the features of the latest iPad OS 16, even in beta. So once we connect the external screen, the trackpad and the keyboard, we will see this arrangement setting in the display settings. And we can turn off the mirror display so that the second display will be an extension. And now finally, we can continue on with our travel plan. So we'll have our four apps on the iPad Pro as we had before, but we also have more like four apps on the external screen. I moved the notes there and also because it's beta, so this black box is actually messages. This is how it looks like here. Well, beta software, but still it makes the job done. Having business or family calls was fine on both devices. This is the MacBook Air and this is the iPad Pro. And you can see that the center stage is working on the iPad Pro. But, well, it's a nice feature, but I prefer to turn it off, to be honest. So, because I've noticed that when it's on, it has some impact on the picture quality. So I usually keep it off. So yeah, here are the web cameras of both devices and here comes the microphone test. Okay, so here is the microphone test of both devices. I'm standing just in front of the MacBook Air and the iPad Pro. So this is the normal quality that you would get during any Skype call, Zoom call, or just voice memos that I'm using right now. Now let me go maybe three meters away, maybe somewhat two meters away. This is what you will get if you'll be on a distance. Also, if you're recording an interview, this is what you'll get from the person who stands behind the device. It's, this is the quality. And now let me open the window. We have quite a lot of traffic today. And now I'm back in front of the laptop and the tablet. And let's see if the microphone picks up any noise. I think it will, but let's see how the noise canceling is doing its job comparing both devices. So yeah, this is the microphone test. Editing videos was perhaps the most comfortable thing to do on the iPad Pro, thanks to LumaFusion that supports lots of iPadOS features. It can edit files from the external storage. It supports resizing the window. You can rearrange the UI as you do on a desktop. It supports an external screen. I wish all apps were like this. But even here, I could hit the iPadOS limitation. I like to listen to some music when I edit the videos, just some instrumental stuff rolling in the background. But iPadOS supports only a single audio output at a time. So if I'm editing a video, it either plays the sound of the video or the music of the background. 
Needless to say that the MacBook doesn't have such a problem at all. If we switch to the audio editing, it's perfect on the iPad Pro. The Ferret Studio is a great software, so working with the Apple Pencil is a pure joy here. But if you plan to use it with an external microphone that has a headphones jack, it will power up the microphone, but the headphones won't be working. So again, another iPadOS limitation. If you plan to buy a device for someone who is not into tech at all, then I would say this. I think that in the current state, macOS looks more mature and the MacBook Air would be the right choice. iPadOS is still in this weird situation when it still doesn't know what it wants to be. You have gestures, you have swipes, you have three dots for rearranging windows, now you have stage manager. If I were a non-tech person, I would go crazy. Oh, the other day a friend of mine asked me how to edit a PDF on an iPad. I said it's pretty easy, you just open it from the Files app, click on the Edit icon and do whatever you need. The next day he messages me saying it doesn't work and sends me a screenshot of the Google Drive app. So I had to show him how to export the document from the Google Drive to the Files app, edit it and upload it back. You could say it's Google problem or Apple problem, but when it will be your friend or family member asking for help, it will be your problem, so I think macOS is better here. Let me know down in the comments how do you feel about iPadOS consistency or inconsistency. Let's compare our feelings. Alright, we started with 1200 US dollars. For this amount of money you get a flagship iPad. It's the most advanced iPad you can get and you get all the sweet package. High refresh rate, bright screen, HDR support, four speakers, face ID, you name it. This device has no compromises in hardware, but has quite a few in software. We just saw it ourselves. For the same amount of money, you get the entry-level MacBook Air on M2. The screen is not that bright, no high refresh rate, no HDR, the speakers could have been better, the camera has no center stage, flagship models have additional ports, this one doesn't. So this device has no compromises in software, but it has quite a few in hardware. If I had nothing, I would go with the MacBook Air. But I have a MacBook already, so I'm keeping the iPad Pro as a perfect secondary device. Let me know what do you think, which one would you go with? I hope this video was useful, it's been Alex, and see you at the Geek's Table. Bye bye!